Hello, and welcome to our session on how to build and deploy a cross-platform application with Flutter and .NET. Streaming from the Symbol Coffee headquarters in London, Esther and I are going to take you through our development experience on Google Cloud. So want to know how to develop, build, and deploy a cross-platform front-end with a scalable back-end? Then grab a coffee, get in line, as we demonstrate our design process and show you what we built. So first, my name is Esther. Hi, and I'm a customer engineer here at Google Cloud. Hello, my name is Francisco, and I'm also a customer engineer at Google Cloud. But today, we're coming to you as developers at Symbol Coffee, our fictitious coffee shop. And what are we going to demonstrate today, Fran? Well, as the Symbol Coffee wanted to provide a more personalized experience to coffee connoisseurs by installing kiosks in every store that let customers visit their local cafe and order a custom-made latte, cappuccino, or macchiato made exactly how they like it. This experience should be consistent on mobile phones and install kiosks running Windows. The application should scale quickly as busy customers arrive looking for their first caffeine of the day. Now, as lead developers, we were tasked with transforming the existing application. We had a very lean development team, Esther and myself, and wanted to be low cost and quick to market. Wow, that sure sounds like a grande order. Let's see what happened and let's preview what we ended up brewing up. Let's start by loading that Flutter application and seeing what that user experience is like. So here it is running as a native Windows application and I can enter my name and order some delicious coffee drink. Hello. All right, and here is the same user experience in the web. You can see same look and feel, no difference there. That's what we're looking for. And hello again. Okay, well, I think it's time to log in and order a coffee. Um, so what I'm gonna do here is uh, log in, select a coffee, put it in the cart and receive a notification when it's ready. Using a dev test account, I log in. And here we go, one very overpriced espresso for me, please. In the cart, submit the order. Excellent, it's roasting and soon we'll be ready. We were given a lot of decision-making power. This meant selecting our cloud provider, technology and tools. We chose Google Cloud because it had the tools that let us focus on building code without having to manage underlying infrastructure. See how we plan this out, Fran. Great. Let's start by looking at the original application. It is hosted on premises. There is a web front end and a back end with a database where data on connoisseurs and their orders is stored. This looks to me like it's your typical three tier pattern, isn't it? That's right. It has a web front end, it's got a back end and a database. Now, currently, all components are manually deployed and updated. Yeah, that's right. And also we wanted to make sure that the front end was cross-platform to run on Windows and store kiosks. We also wanted to transform the application into an architecture that could scale efficiently, making the most of cloud native services. And automating the build and deployment was very important to us as it would help us spend more time on the code itself. Yeah, and then as we were developing the application, we also just wanted to keep our users at the front of our minds. This is where mapping the user journey helped. And we decided that the user journey would have two parts. In the first part, coffee connoisseurs would open the Symbol Coffee app, view and select their product. Our goal was to make this a consistent experience on any platform, be that mobile or in-store kiosks. That's right. And then the second part involved adding a coffee to the cart, making the order, and sending a notification when it was available to collect. This would all be handled by the backend, which would need to scale as more orders were made. So the coffee connoisseur, or even just like us, I guess, would then pay for and collect their caffeinated beverage at the counter, and they would sip and enjoy. 
Next, it was time to put our design down on paper. Here are the components that make up the application. The front end can be accessed as a Windows application, on in-store kiosk, or as a web app on your phone as you walk into the cafe, maybe. These have a consistent look and feel, and it's crucially for us developers, or Fran and I, it did not require us to duplicate our effort in developing them. Meanwhile, the back end is composed of cloud native services that store data in Firestore and communicate with each other using PubSub. But if you remember back, Fran, before we started our development sprints, we reviewed our decisions just to make sure that we'd select the right tool for each goal. Indeed. Now, we chose to automate deployment from the start using Cloud Build and Cloud Deploy. Using a serverless CI CD platform allowed us to focus on building and deploying our software at great speed without having to spend time and effort managing those tools. That's right. We also decided and wrote down that we would write our front end using Flutter for cross platform applications written by that one team, Fran and I, and writing together with that one language, which is Dart. And finally, we opted for a serverless platform for a scalable backend. We chose Cloud Run for independent updates and serverless auto scaling for our three microservices, storing coffee order data in Cloud Firestore, sending messages with Cloud PubSub and orchestrating the events with cloud workflows. Oh, that was a lot of decisions, wasn't it? Now let's see what happened when we actually hit the ground and got a lot of caffeine in our system and started coding. Let's go back and show you what our two most exciting sprints looked like. For the first sprints, we focused on building a cross-platform front end. Our first effort was to rewrite the front end to Flutter. First, we built for web, and second, we used that same Dart code to then build the application and run on Windows devices. In the future, this now allows us to maybe build for iOS or Android. While our Windows applications would be used on physical devices on store, we are hosting our web front end on Firebase hosting. That was just so we could deliver our content fast and deploy our web app with just one single command. So, Fran, remember back, how did we iterate on our backend services so that they could support our Flutter apps um, on the web and in store? Well, Esther, with the front end done, we started focusing on the back end services. Now, critically, we automated the build and deployment for the front end and back end using Google Cloud's CI CD solutions, including Cloud Build. This was so we could focus on deploying value fast and making changes to our code. We then broke the monolith apart and rewrote the backend services to .NET Core, using build packs to containerize and deploying the images to Cloud Run with Cloud Build. The three microservices could now be updated independently. Now, all this work meant we now had a customer coffee order app available on web, in store on Windows machines, supported with event-driven microservices in .NET, and a scalable serverless database. Great. By embracing Google Cloud serverless offerings, we were able to spend more time improving our application and less time managing underlying infrastructure. So you've seen the final product, but how did we get here from our original front end app? Esther is going to demonstrate now. Awesome. So now we find ourselves with a Flutter app built for the web. We have supporting services in .NET, and these are hosted in Cloud Run. There are a few changes that we had to make to the Flutter application. First, we had to enable Windows as a platform with Flutter. This means that every time we do a Flutter build, we'll also compile to source for both web and Windows. Amazing. To compile a desktop application, you must build it on the targeted platform. So in this case, a Windows machine. I've also had to pre-install the Flutter SDK and Dart as the language. In addition, I'm using Visual Studio Code IDE. The reason I'm using this is that because it gives me a consistent dev experience across both my Mac OS computer and my Windows computer. And it enables me to leverage the built-in extensions such as Google Cloud Code extension and the Flutter extension for debugging and that hot, hot, hot copy reload. To add desktop support to an existing Flutter app, 
Let me show you how we run the following command from a Windows computer. Cool. So in the directory of the Flutter application, we're going to do a Flutter create, oh, Flutter create platforms, and then we're going to target the Windows platform. And that's going to build all the compiled native app code in that current directory. Amazing. So you can see that's all been done for us. So now alongside the web folder, we've got a Windows folder. Awesome. So now that we've the Flutter app built for Windows, let's run it locally. And we're going to use the Flutter hot reload feature to then make changes to the running app in debug mode. We can change the text maybe in the dark file, and then we'll compile and reload it to the native Windows app. Oh, so I want to change the copy from what is your name to please enter your name. I'm going to put this in now. So this is in the dark code. And then we're going to hit save. We're going to see what this looks like on the Windows application. So let's also change the method that gets displayed when we place an order. Currently, it's roasting. Now, this is handled by the asynchronous.net order service that is deployed on Cloud Run and called by the Flutter application. We can update this to following in the order controller. We're going to push all these changes now. So the Flutter generated Windows application under the Windows directory, the text on the step customer dart file, and finally the message back from the .NET order service. So we've pushed our changes to our source repository in GitHub. And now this push will invoke a trigger in Cloud Build to start our CI CD pipelines. These pipelines are defined in YAML and are co-located in our monorepo alongside the code in which they build and deploy. These triggers were created with infrastructure as code using Terraform, which we can then reuse to deploy new services quickly, maybe in the future or after a couple more copies. Even the Terraform code gets deployed through Cloud Build, meaning that we can always trust our cloud services and workloads are in a known state at all times. All right, so we've pushed the changes. And now the first pipeline I'm going to show is deploying the Flutter web app, which uses a container to build the Flutter application for web and deploy it, it's shown here, on Firebase hosting. If the build is successful, then Firebase hosting will then promote this build as a newest release automatically. The second pipeline to show is building the .NET order service container using build packs, and this is deployed to Cloud Run. Much like Firebase hosting, we can determine how much traffic is being sent to this newest release. We can see this here in the revisions. With the addition of binary authorization, we can attest that only the images that we were built with Cloud Build in the dev environment are then deployed to prod. So, I'm ready for another copy. Let's see the changes. So you can see here already, we've got please enter your name, which is deployed through Firebase hosting. I'm going to place in my next order of a very expensive copy. And now we can see that backend service also representing brewing. But you know what? Actually, I think roasting worked better. I, I think it has it, it has a it has a good sound to it. Let's actually redirect all that traffic back in Cloud Run for that service to that previous version that was previously built with Cloud Build. We're going to roll this back. So I'm just going to change the traffic here, save it, and this will deploy. Now, all we need to do to show that this change has gone through is create another order. So, yes, another. Another very expensive coffee, just for me. Esther, create. Yes, let's go to two, why not? And you can see here, we've gone back to roasting. Amazing. You know what? Actually, let's also roll back that front end hosting as well. Let's go back to that old copy on the, the front end to show what that text might look like. A couple of clicks on the Firebase console. We'll do a hard refresh on the front end. Another hard refresh. There we are. 
what is your name? And we're back, folks. So we've seen all these changes in the web app. Um, but I, I think actually we're for keyframe. What about the Flutter native Windows application? Well, of course, we're using Cloud Build here again to build and deploy. Cool. So our Windows pipeline, because if you remember, we can only build a Windows application on a Windows OS. Behind the scenes, Cloud Build here is using a Windows VM on a compute engine. So we're spinning this up as part of the pipeline. Now, we are also using a community builder for Cloud Build here. So once we do have that Windows VM, we are then building another Windows container using Flutter and Visual Studio Code. You can see here this in the Docker file. Once we've built this, we will then push this container to container registry. This is all done in the pipeline and part of our PowerShell script. And you can see here, these are containers and container registry. So this is now being used in another script um, on the same VM to then be able to build the application for Flutter for Windows, just like what we did locally. Amazing. And just like that, we have a Flutter Windows executable. And now that's ready to store maybe in Google Cloud Storage, and we can deploy it to our kiosks. And that's our journey so far. So to recap, Esther and I were given the task of building an application that met the changing needs at Symbol Coffee. We built a cloud native application starting from existing components. Now, throughout this journey, we opted to use platforms that helped us focus on code and meet our goals at speed. Flutter allowed us to build cross-platform application running on web and Windows. Our serverless backend services deployed on Cloud Run allowed us to focus on the business logic of ordering coffees, all without having to focus on the operating and scaling of the underlying infrastructure. And finally, Cloud Build, as our serverless CI CD platform, allowed us to continuously make changes and deploy. All of these together let us focus on what we care about most, writing good code. And hopefully today we have inspired you to do the same. Or maybe you've seen some code that you might want to improve in the demos. Regardless, thank you so much for watching. We hope that we found this session useful. And we wish you very good luck on your cloud native adventures. Bye.